Welcome to the sixth lecture on sequence of real numbers. Today we will discuss sandwich theorem. So first we will state the theorem and then we will prove this and then using this theorem how we can compute limits of sequence of real numbers we will see two examples and then at the end we will discuss on theorem uh, which says that if we consider two convergent sequences and suppose the terms of one sequence are less than or equal to the terms of the other sequence then the limit of the first sequence it is less than or equal to the limit of the second sequence here is the theorem so given three sequences xn yn and zn satisfying these inequalities so suppose nth term of the first sequence it is less than or equal to nth term of the second that is less than or equal to nth term of the third sequence. The statement is if the first sequence and the third sequence converge to the same limit A then the middle one that is also a convergent sequence and it converges to the same limit. In other words if limit xn is A and limit zn is A then limit yn that also exists and it is same as A. So let us prove this theorem. So since A is the limit of xn, A satisfies epsilon n condition for xn as well as A satisfies epsilon n condition for zn. We just have to prove that A satisfies epsilon n condition for yn. So for that we consider a positive real number epsilon and then since A is the limit of xn, so for this epsilon there exists a natural number n1 such that all the terms beyond this natural number lie in this range. So in other words it is equivalent to say that mod xn minus a it is less than epsilon and since a is also the limit of zn it satisfies epsilon n condition. So for this for this same epsilon there should be some natural number n2 such that all the terms of this sequence beyond this natural number all the terms should lie in this range and then if we set n that is maximum of both n1 and n2 then beyond this natural number we can see that all the terms of this uh, middle sequence yn it lie in this range why because for all n greater than n this a minus epsilon it is less than xn and nth term of xn it is less than or equal to yn so it is less than or equal to yn and then yn it is less than or equal to zn but beyond this natural number so if n is greater than n then in particular this natural number that should be greater than this n2 and therefore we have inequality that zn it is less than it is less than a plus epsilon so all together we have that a minus epsilon less than yn less than a plus epsilon for all natural numbers beyond this and therefore a that is satisfying epsilon n condition for this sequence and therefore limit yn it exists and it is same as a and this is sandwich theorem so it says that if we have three sequences and suppose we have inequality and if this first sequence and the third sequence they converge to same limit a then the middle one that is also convergent sequence and it converges to the same limit a and we can understand clearly why we call it sandwich theorem. So first example limit n tends to infinity sine of 1 by n it is 0. So using sandwich theorem how we can compute this let us see. So we know that if x lie in this range 0 comma pi by 2 then 0 less than or equal to sine of x that is less than or equal to x because if we draw the diagram then this y equal to x line it will be somewhere here so it is y equal to x line now if we draw the diagram for sin x 
suppose this is x axis if we draw the diagram for sin x it will lie somewhere here okay so we can we can see that this point it is pi by 2 and this is 0 so in this range in this range we can see that this sine of sine of x it is somewhere here and it is less than or equal to that x okay so for all n since 1 by n it lie in this range sine of 1 by n that is less than or equal to 1 by n and of course sine of 1 by n that is greater than or equal to 0 because 1 by n it is lying in this range and then we can apply sandwich theorem and this is a constant sequence its limit is 0 and this is another sequence whose nth term is 1 by n but it is uh, it is also convergent sequence and it converges to 0 so both these and these they converge to the same limit 0 therefore this middle one it is a convergent sequence and it converges to 0 so limit n tends to infinity this sine of 1 by n that should be 0 this second example t i claim that limit n tends to infinity this term it is 0 and let's see how we can apply this sandwich theorem in this case so of course this term it is bigger than this term so therefore this term it is always strictly greater than 0 but this term what we can do that so this is just divided by 1 and we can multiply both numerator and denominator by this term so then new denominator we will have this and in the numerator we will have we can apply this formula so a minus b times a plus b it is same as a square minus b square and in that case this is your this is a this is b then a square minus b square that will be 1 so this term it will be same as 1 by this and then if we take common n then it is just 1 by square root of n times this value and ultimately we can see that in the denominator we have 1 plus some positive real number this value it is less than or equal to 1 by root n because this value it is less than or equal to 1 in fact this is less than 1 because in the denominator we have something bigger than 1 so I should say it is less than this value but anyway we have this inequality so we want limit of this term and we can see that it is lying in this range 0 and this value now using epsilon n condition one can prove that n one can apply sandwich theorem so because this term it is lying in this range and limit of this thing it is 0 because it is a constant sequence and limit of this thing one one has to prove that it is also 0 so then applying sandwich theorem limit of this thing it exists and it should be 0 this is second example and here is another theorem it says that if we consider these two convergent sequences xn and yn and suppose we have inequalities on the terms so nth term of the first sequence it is less than or equal to nth term of the second sequence then we have inequality on their limit as well so limit xn that that should be less than or equal to limit of yn let's prove this so let limit n tends to infinity xn is x and limit n tends to infinity yn is y okay and we have inequality on the terms so if we uh, set the n so zn is xn minus yn then since we have this inequality so zn that should be less than or equal to 0 and we know the relation between limits and algebraic operations so limit n tends to infinity zn exists and if it is z then z should be the difference between those limits okay so since zn is xn minus yn so this limit z that should be limit of xn that is x 
minus limit of y n that is y. So, z is x minus y and we just have to prove that z is less than or equal to 0 and that will prove that x less than or equal to y and we will have this inequality. We will prove this just by contrapositive way. So, if possible let z that is some positive real number. So, suppose z is greater than 0 and then we should get some contradiction. Okay. So, since z is greater than 0, there exists a positive real number epsilon such that z minus epsilon that is positive. So, if we draw the picture here, so suppose 0 is somewhere here and suppose z is somewhere here. So, z is on the uh, positive side of this origin. Then the epsilon, there should be some positive real number epsilon such that z minus epsilon that is also positive. So, if we cons we can always choose some epsilon so that z minus epsilon it lie on the positive side of this origin. So, z minus epsilon that will be somewhere here and z plus epsilon that will be somewhere here. And then we should use uh, the fact that z is the limit of this one. Therefore, z should satisfy epsilon n condition. So, for this particular epsilon, so that z minus epsilon is positive. So, for this particular epsilon, there should be some natural number n. So, that beyond that natural number, all the terms of this sequence z n that should lie in this range. So, for all natural numbers greater than that capital N, z n it should lie in this range. Okay? And therefore, z n that should be greater than 0 because z minus epsilon it is something positive. Therefore, beyond this natural number all the terms z n it is greater than 0. And this is a contradiction because all the terms of z n these are non-positive. So, z n that is less than or equal to 0 because we have this inequality. And this contradicts the assumption that z is some positive real number. So, therefore, z cannot be positive. So, z is some non-positive real number. z is less than or equal to 0 and hence x that is less than or equal to y and we have this inequality.